One of the more difficult scientific concepts to grasp is Einstein's theory of relativity, and in particular, how gravity can be explained by way of curved space-time. Today my goal is to get you to understand it in less than 10 minutes. We'll be using diagrams that show time on one axis, and one dimension of space or distance on the other. The diagram establishes a frame of reference that measurements can be made against. For now, pretend that gravity doesn't exist and everything is floating freely. This is the realm of Einstein's special relativity. If an object is at rest in your chosen reference frame, it's traveling through time only and not traveling through space. If it's moving at the speed of light, it's traveling through space only and not traveling through time. If it's moving at some other speed, it's traveling through both space and time. And, as measured against your chosen reference frame, it's traveling slower through time than it would if it were at rest, by this amount. This is the time dilation of special relativity, which makes fast-moving clocks look like they're ticking slower. Also, the length of the object, as measured in the same frame, decreases by this amount, length contraction. Choosing a different reference frame for this same state of motion amounts to rotating the graph. For example, here's the rest frame, which is what would be experienced by someone in the rocket. Time dilation and length contraction happen kind of for the same reason the apparent length of a fence depends upon your perspective. Rotate your perspective and the fence looks shorter. In your own rest frame, your wristwatch always ticks at the full rate. But imagine you're moving past markers that have been placed 100 kilometers apart. In your rest frame, they are moving past you. At 80% of the speed of light, you'd measure them to be only 60 kilometers apart. And clocks attached to them would run at 60% their full rate. Special relativity describes inertial motion. Things are either at rest or moving at a constant velocity, depending on the reference frame chosen. But if you fire up a rocket engine, you'll start to accelerate. Even in a spaceship with no windows, objectively you'll be able to tell that this is happening. An accelerometer will show not only what direction you're accelerating in, but by how much. This isn't so when you're moving inertially. In that case, whether you're at rest or moving depends on your choice of reference frame and nothing else. So a state of acceleration is absolute. It's not just a matter of perspective, like inertial motion. When something is experiencing acceleration, it's no longer moving in a straight line through space-time. A straight line through space-time is called a geodesic. And if something is accelerating, it moves along a path that curves away from the geodesic it would have taken if it weren't accelerating. In other words, if it were moving inertially. So that's the big concept. Inertial objects take straight paths through space-time, and accelerated objects take curved paths. This makes sense on the graph. If the line is curved, the object is traveling slowly through space at first, and at later times, it's traveling faster. Einstein realized that an accelerating state of motion is physically, experimentally indistinguishable from just being supported against the Earth's gravity, at least in a small, local region. This is called the equivalence principle, and it's the bedrock of general relativity. But here's the catch. Ordinarily, when you're accelerated by a rocket or a cable or whatever, you have to be going somewhere. Your path through space-time curves, and you can't remain stuck on one line of space at rest relative to other things not moving through space, like the ground or a tabletop. That is, if space-time is flat and subject to the rules of ordinary Euclidean geometry like we all learned in school. But Einstein wondered, what if gravity is a case of space-time having a non-Euclidean, 
curved geometry. And it turns out, that's how the modern explanation of gravity, general relativity, works. The fabric of space-time is flat by default, but in the presence of mass or energy, space-time takes on a curved geometry. If you're an inertial object, as always you will travel in a straight path, a geodesic across this fabric. The curvature will change your orientation to space-time as you go. If you started off traveling only through time, you will travel increasingly through space as well, and fall. This can be seen most clearly if we straighten out the space-time curvature, taking the geodesic with it. The object falls through space at an increasing rate. But if you don't want to fall, if you want to remain at rest relative to the planet's surface, your path has to curve along with space-time. And that means you have to be accelerated upward. It's only within this accelerated reference frame that inertial or free objects appear to accelerate in the opposite direction, down. People sometimes assume that if Earth's surface is perpetually accelerating upward, then the Earth has to be expanding. But in curved space-time, remember that acceleration has to happen just for things to stay put. Everything at the surface is pushed upward by whatever is underneath, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's an equilibrium situation, analogous to how the edge of a rotating wheel is forever accelerating toward the center. Centripetal acceleration, but the wheel isn't contracting. Gravity affects light as well as matter. A beam of light parallel to Earth's surface is deflected downward by a tiny amount. Given a few assumptions, this can be attributed to the pull of Newtonian gravity. However, the light's deflection is exactly double what Newton would expect. This was Einstein's prediction that was famously confirmed by the Eddington experiment in 1919, proving that his theory of gravity was more accurate than Newton's. Remember time dilation and special relativity? Gravity causes time dilation too. A clock deep in a gravity well and a clock far away both tick at the same rate according to their local observers. But to the far away observer, the clock in the more strongly curved space-time appears to be ticking slower than their own clock. Meanwhile, to the other observer, the faraway clock appears to be ticking faster. Both gravitational and special relativity time dilation have to be programmed into the GPS to keep satellites and ground clocks synchronized. To learn more, check out my other videos on the topic. With an accelerometer app, you can prove that an object at rest on a surface is indeed accelerating upward, similar to how an object on a rotating wheel is centripetally accelerating inward. And you'll learn how Isaac Newton's theory of gravity remains useful for most engineering applications, why thinking of mass as the charge of gravity is not a good explanation for the accelerometer experiment, and why Einstein's theory is just better overall.